So I'm joined with Peter McMullen, who's the director of Lighthouse Mission. And, you know, maybe somebody has heard of Lighthouse Mission, but they don't necessarily know exactly what you guys do. So could you just give us kind of like a brief overview of kind of your heart and what Lighthouse Mission does? Sure. Uh, Lighthouse Mission is 113 years old. It's been around for a long time, started as a church. When the Great Depression hit, um, it became a soup kitchen. And since the Great Depression, it has been that. Uh, We've been a soup kitchen. Today, we serve uh, about 700 hot meals a day um, to Winnipeg's most vulnerable. Uh, When we have, we we share items that have been donated, such as clothing items, hygiene items, or any basic needs that uh, our guests and friends might need. And is there something, because I'm sure you take donations, is there something like right now you're like, okay, we could use a little bit more of this. So if somebody has some lying around or they want to help you guys out? Yeah, I mean, uh, we do uh, require a lot of seasonal items. So as you're getting into summer, I mean, uh, important items that for, for folks that don't have a place where they regularly stay, which means they don't have a dresser. A backpack is always great because the evenings can get cool. And if I have a hoodie uh, that I can wear in the morning and the evenings and take it off in the afternoon when it's hot. So you, you have items like uh, hats and uh, hoodies. Zip-up hoodies are the most popular backpacks, um, summer footwear, um, shoes can get disposable when they're wet, socks and underwear are always important, always the hygiene items, whether it be soaps, shampoos, uh, I mean, I could go through the entire list, but on the clothing side, that's what we're looking for. And you guys got some, kind of like pivoting from that, you guys got some exciting news recently where you got a new building for Lighthouse Mission. So can, and you know, just chatting before we were recording this right now, you're saying it's an incredible story. So I'd just love for you to just share that with the Siege Van listeners. Sure. Um, I'll I'll give a little background about what's happening at Lighthouse Mission. Um, A few years back, um, well, when Daniel and Katie Emond, who are uh, my senior leadership, uh, Daniel's the president of Lighthouse Mission, and uh, they also represent Adult and Teen Challenge of Central Canada, the leadership there as well. Um, they've been taking care of Lighthouse Mission, um, which is still a separate organization for a number of years. And they really um, invested their, their time, their heart uh, into the vision and mission of Lighthouse. Um, the building that we're in, we've been in since 1974 at 669 Main Street. And then in the 80s, they, the ownership or the, the leadership at the time picked up the building next door. 667 and it had remained unused um, and uh, for I guess all of that time up until about two years ago when we were able to open up the main floor and that became a a drop-in during COVID where people could get out of the elements and you know extra seating for people who were having a a meal with us and um, at that point Daniel had mentioned that we need to use that space at 667 in a meaningful way to you know further the kingdom and uh, at the time when I I just come into managing the lighthouse before I became director, he'd said, you know what, what if we put in a detox? Um, We have two floors, maybe we could put a detox space for men and a detox space for women. And it was so important at the time because um, the guests that come into lighthouse, um, they come in for a hot meal, but in reality, um, what they get out of it is connection and relationship, which is what we're all wired for um, by God. And uh, when we talk to them, we find out that there are real struggles, as you can imagine. The majority of our population struggles with addiction in one way or another. And um, as we tried to get folks from a hot meal, maybe into a long-term treatment program where they can have a new beginning, uh, we realized that there's a tremendous bottleneck in Winnipeg, and that was people couldn't get into detox to get into these programs. So we would lose them. So the vision started. Uh, we started to raise money to uh, to renovate the building and, and put in a couple of floors of detox space. Um, so uh, over the two years, we, we, we did what we could. Uh, we raised money. We, we had some tremendous successes uh, through the grace of God. Uh, we received uh, $2.4 million from the federal government, several hundred thousand from the province, and, um, you know, money from various other sources. But as the plans were going along, our vision was to to dodge the renovations in these two buildings and continue to serve our guests. So uh, we're moving along in the process, and um, a coincidental event happened. Some will call it coincidental. Um, our friends across the street who had been there for over 30 years um, was a place called Our Place, Shenu. It was an organization that uh, supported, the, through the Catholic Church, they supported uh, Winnipeg's the folks on the street the same way we did, but uh, at a different scale. They were only open um, 
for two days a week, three hours a day, and uh, they served, you know, largely the same people. Um, during COVID, um, it became apparent that they, they needed to close. They, they didn't have the resources to continue. And at that point, our relationship with them blossomed in the background. They shared all of the donated items they received with us. So we took all of the food don items, uh, donated, donations sorry, um, to uh, help our ham- emergency hamper program and, and the clothing items they received, and we used it. Um, Post-COVID, um, they, they were trying to figure out when they were going to reopen and how they were going to reopen. And last July, um, they decided uh, that, you know, due to what's happened and changed on the street, whether it be the drugs or it became more dangerous or different, um, they had come to um, a sad conclusion. I think it was a split decision by all of the people that served and their board that they had decided last July they were going to close their doors for good. Um, in that, um, they phoned us and they said, Hey, was there anything you would like? And we, we, we talked with them and they shared a number of pieces of equipment, freezers, washer, dryer, clothing, and all the food they had. And, um, you know, we were thankful and grateful, but again, um, the conversation came up with, uh, you know, my leadership, a member of the board and Daniel, and they said, well, what are they doing with the building? And, uh, he says, I'm not sure. And he says, well, why don't you ask them? So I went and asked them and they were overjoyed to find out that we were interested in what they were doing with the building. There was a number of uh, organizations that wanted to purchase the building from them, but it wasn't going to be the continued purpose of what they were doing, which was serving those individuals on the street. So, um, we started the conversation again and we'd mentioned that, you know, we're not in a position, we're just about to go into this major renovation we've raised the money for to renovate our building and put in the detox. And we can't really afford to buy a building, even though they wanted to give us first rights of refusal. Um, so we said, you know, would, would you consider maybe for a year we could make you what would be a quasi lease payment for a couple thousand dollars a month. And maybe after that, we could talk about purchasing it if we're in a better position, because we just simply couldn't go into a mortgage going into a major renovation. Um, so I presented that in January. And um, a week later, um, when they heard that our vision was to carry on, pass, uh, they're going to pass us the torch, and the, the torch, sorry, and we were not only going to um, continue to serve the same people. Instead of two days a week, three hours a day, we were going to be able to do it forty hours a week. So, on a unanimous vote on their board, they said, "You know what? Um, we're coming back with a counter proposal," and they said they'd like to sell us the building for a dollar. And, um, it's kind of funny cause at the time, uh, you know, we, we don't have a huge staff lighthouse. Isn't that big. It's growing as you can understand, but with five staff and our budget already set for the year, um, I was a little concerned things like I felt like the dog that caught the car and it's like, you know, once you have it, what are you going to do with it? It says, now we have to figure out staff. We have to figure out m- money for the budget. I says, boy, oh boy, <laughs> I don't know if we can take this on right now. We're just about to go into a renovation and, um, this is where God, God's timing comes into the picture, and it's, it's really quite incredible. Um, in March, March 15th, after we had agreed to take the building for a dollar, um, we took possession, March 15th. A week later, we were meeting with our contractors um, that were going to do the renovation, and unfortunately for us, we were now well over budget uh, for our project, and we needed to find ways to cut our costs to, to make this project a success to bring the vision of our uh, detox to fruition. And um, they said, you know what? One of the ways we can do this is if you can actually get out of that building. Because if you're in that building, it's going to add time to the job. It's going to add money because of the extra time. And um, we'll be able to do a lot more with you guys out of the building. And I'm going, oh my goodness, like, what are we going to do? And they says, we'd like you to be out in a month. So, of course, I'm sitting at this boardroom table and my stomach sinks and I'm like, what the heck are we going to do? And it didn't take long for me to do the do God's math in my head and realize that five days before we had taken possession of this building and now I can see um, what, what, what was happening. Uh, God had started this process back in July of 2023 with the decision to close the other building, but he wasn't done with that building yet. And... Um, we were able, um, 
amazingly to move out of our existing building and get it prepared for renovation to cut our costs on our uh, on on the job to save money uh, to bring us back closer to our budget um and move from our existing operation where we'd been since 1974 at 669 Main Street over to our new building at 676 Main Street. We did it within a week and we were only down for one day so we could test to make sure that we can continue to serve our meals the way we were. And lo and behold, after that one day of being closed, we were open and serving our 700 meals a day again. And it's absolutely amazing. There is so much to unpack in that story, but um, wow, that is incredible. So, I mean, first off, I think just if somebody's watching this, or just to clarify, so getting this new building, that doesn't mean you're done with this old one because you're doing renovations. So you're obviously still invested in in that one, right? That's right. And then now it's just, yeah, I mean, just not skipping a beat really and just still continuing to serve the community, serve the people of downtown you know, caring for them, loving them, being the hands and feet of Jesus is incredible. And I love what you said a few minutes ago, you know, like of how important and how vital this relationship was that you had built with them while they were still doing that. And then that's ultimately what like led to this. And now you guys expanding and just, yeah, that is, that's incredible. You know, so for, for you, like how important was that relationship kind of building to prepare you for where you are now? Well, there's a lot of um, amazing things that happened in that relationship. A lot of the folks came to know us, and they saw how we served. And um, they they served the same people in the same way, but they, they got to see what we were able to do on a larger scale. And, and they really felt confident and comfortable that, that, that us moving in, we were going to be able to carry on what they were doing. The the punchline to all of this for our guests and friends that come in off the street, though, they're the ones that are truly benefiting. This has nothing to do with an organization benefiting, um, although we are. Uh, but within the first few days of our guests visiting our new location, um, it's bigger than what we had before. It's newer. It's in better shape. Um, it has an actual lobby. Um, and one I remember the... Her name is Tracy, and she was in tears, and she said, this is so amazing what's happening here. She said, you know, the other building, we love you guys. We love the building, but it was small, and so many people come in, and they're hurting, and they're angry, and we had to sit in that smaller space. And and the reality is that the old building, um, the door, you could open the door, and you could swing to hit the first table. So you can imagine in January, February, somebody trying to have a you know, a meal and minus 40 is blasting on them, right? So she said, you know, this building is just absolutely amazing. And she started to cry. Uh, we have more space. We are seating more people. Um, they're more comfortable. And the joy level is just so high in this new building. And um, what's really nice is um, we're going to be with, with our friends from our place, Shea New. We're going to be having a little ceremony on July 2nd calling it passing of the lantern ceremony and uh one of the volunteers there's two of them that are quite actively involved two two of the individuals from our place she knew larry and and john um john continues to volunteer at the new location uh, he comes in every tuesday and uh he loves it so there's there's continuity in there not only for our guests not only for us but also for the wonderful people that were our place she knew and Larry, uh, he was, both John and Larry were on the board of the previ previous owners, and uh, they're very actively involved in what we do today. Yeah, wow, that's that's so cool to hear. And I mean, yeah, even just you saying, like, your guests are more comfortable, too, in this new in this new building, and that's probably even better for them because it's, like you said, minus 40 in the winter. You don't want to be feeling that while you're trying to warm up and you're trying to eat a meal and to see just how it's just continued and really, yeah, just seeing God's hand just over this whole situation of just opening the right doors at the right times to kind of put you guys in this situation. Yeah, I can't imagine if somebody is uh, given the proposition that they need to move out of their building um, within a month, go to a different building and continue their operation uh, the same way it was running. I have no idea without God's hand in this what that would cost somebody to do. 
they would have to sell their building. Oh, sorry, they wouldn't have to sell their building. They'd have to find a new building nearby. They'd have to buy the new building. They would have to renovate it to make it work. Um, the amount of time and money that would have taken if this was just simply, simply somebody doing it on their own will, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe even a million. But for us, we had to change a little bit of wiring for our coffee machine and we're up and running. It cost us less than $10,000 to do the switch, but, when it were, but there, there are other, other things we have to worry about now on the financial side. So we, we do need an increase in our support as well. But uh, we know God does provide as he's shown us in this case in particular. <laughs> And just talking about that support, you know, if somebody wants to, like, find out more information about what Lighthouse is doing, you know, maybe they want to volunteer with what you guys are doing, how is the best place for them to find that information out? Um, always uh, lighthousemission.ca. Um, you can just send an email to info with Lighthouse Mission if you have any questions or you wonder. That comes directly to me. Um, and there's, there's an application for people who wish to volunteer. Um, myself or Jason will be in contact with them and uh, we can set that up. Um, and um, always encourage to call if you're looking for way, new and inventive ways to support. I mean, there's, uh, we are looking for financial support towards our renovation. We know we're going to be running into some issues um, with the old buildings we're moving out of. They have to be opened up and, and gutted quite a bit. So uh, lighthousemission.ca and uh, send us an email. Do you have any sort of timeline of kind of when that renovation is supposed to be be complete or it's just like, you know, just work at it and we'll see kind of? Well, we're hoping in 11 or 12 months we'll be ready to open our doors and, and ideally have the detox open uh, so we can bring those folks in that are just getting some temporary relief from hunger um, into a new hope that they didn't even imagine when they just came in to get a sandwich suddenly they're looking at a new life. So um, that's our, our mission and our vision is to meet somebody just at the coffee and then um, see what God has in store for them. And what do you think that's going to be like to be operating, like, because you've expanded, obviously, so to have this new building and then to have the old ones kind of coming back and to be serving the community out of all, all of those locations? Well, going from a soup kitchen to uh, adding a detox, um, obviously there's going to be a lot of other things where we, we're going to need to support the community, whether it be um, counseling them to, towards programs um, or uh, you know maybe helping them once they've completed the detox and the next steps and then when they're even finished their long-term programming to come back and connect with us if they need to connect to other agencies for community support. Uh, so we're, we're looking to have more than just a, you know, a quick touch contact of a meal. We want to have long-term contacts with, with the folks we're serving. Um, I mean, the importance of this detox is, is when we have a recovery-oriented detox, if we can get 30 people a month through a detox, that's 360, 360 a year. Even if we get 10 or 20% of those folks into long-term programming, let's say it's 20%, that's 72 people a year going from the street and, and into long-term programming. And let's just say that population right now, of people using the services in that core are 700. That's 10% of the people that are going for a sandwich and suddenly finding themselves in long-term programming and maybe a permanent and new hope in life. Uh, so it, it doesn't take long when when we're really, our goal is to, to help change people's lives and, and save their souls. So um, having that extra building, we can clearly see there's going to be use for it to support all of our friends and, and guests in downtown Winnipeg. And lastly, how can, just as the CHVN listeners and family, how can they be in prayer for what Lighthouse Mission is doing in the future? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean... Right now, we're a meal service program. Uh, we're going to have to develop something, uh, even though we're, we're tied closely with Adult and Teen Challenge. I myself personally, um, I, I was um, struggled in addiction. I went through the Adult and Teen Challenge program. I'm aware of what how detoxes work, but we're going to have to develop a whole new program. And they can pray that... Um, that our, the development of this program goes smoothly. They can pray for the government to come alongside of us to help us through the process. And they can pr pray for the, the support we're going to need um, as we're going just from uh, our current budget into adding more to our new budget so that this transition and growth in our organization is that God's hand is in it and, and that um, 
that the doors that need to be opened will be opened. Well, Peter, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing this exciting news and exciting story about what God is doing with Lighthouse Mission. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me.